Coming up on the Globe Sports Corner, we look at the changes to the Goshen College staff in the last few years. Benjamin Cotton talks with the new women's volleyball coach, and we interview Simon Graber-Miller about his performance at the NAIA National Indoor Track Championships. All that and more on this episode of the Globe Sports Corner. Goshen College Athletics has seen a lot of new faces over the past few years, including coaches for softball, women's volleyball, and a new athletic director. Megan Bauer has more on the story. The Goshen College Athletic Department have welcomed more than six fresh faces in the past year. Although there's been a lot of changes to the department, veteran members already recognize the benefits that their new colleagues have brought. Track and field coach Rustin Nice has already noticed a positive shift in the department. So we've had six new staff members that have been hired since the fall of last year. Um, how have these staff members positively impacted the department thus far? When you bring in new people, they bring in a new kind of energy, and it just shifts our culture as coaches from what it was, and it, it allows us to be a little bit different and to interact with people in a different way. And you've been part of Goshen College for a long time. You're a 2002 graduate. Now that you're a coach for the track team, how has the athletic department changed uh, from being an athlete to now as a coach? The department has gotten a lot younger as far as the coaches go, and I think the department as a whole approaches the student-athlete experience more holistically than we used to as from when I was a student to when I'm a coach now. New athletic director Harold Watson has big aspirations for the future of the department on his first year on the job. I think our goal is to be consistent in everything that we do. So every two or three years, all of our programs are getting a chance to compete for conference championship and giving our student athletes a unique experience, which is something that I think we, we haven't had. The most recent hire is Courtney Crawford, who replaces Jim Ruthier as the head women's volleyball coach. Crawford started her duties on March 1st. For Globe Sports, I'm Megan Bauer. Even with the new faces at Goshen, they create a great atmosphere for all the Goshen College Maple Leafs. When we return, Benjamin Cotton visits with the most recent new face, the Goshen College women's volleyball coach. I'm getting my degree from the college named TV School of the Year three out of the last four years. It's not in Muncie or in Indianapolis. I attend Goshen College, and communication is just one of the 35 outstanding majors offered here. At GC, you will work with professionals and get your hands on the camera in your first semester on campus. How do I know that Goshen College was the best choice? Right after graduation, I start my first job, broadcasting professional baseball. Take the next step towards your career. Welcome back to the Globe Sports Corner. I'm Benjamin Cotton, and to my left with me is Courtney Crawford, the new women's volleyball coach here at Goshen College. Coach, thank you for coming down to the studio. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and uh, first question is, so what made you choose Goshen College? Um, when I came for my interview, I um, everyone just seemed so nice, and everyone was so welcoming, and it kind of reminded me of my experience in college. Uh, it was a tight-knit group of people. Everyone said hi. Everyone gave you a smile, a wave. Um, and that's just something that I've always enjoyed being a part of, and I knew that when I came here, that was something that I would be getting as well. So that was one thing that really drew me to the school. Um, and more specifically, the volleyball program, the girls are young, and I was looking for something where I could grow as a coach as well as growing the program. Yeah, for sure. And you said you were an assistant before here. Where were you coaching at before? So before I came to Goshen, I was the assistant head coach at – or I. <laughs> I was the assistant coach at University of Indianapolis. Okay, okay. And so next question is, you've been here for two weeks. Like, what's your, so what, what's the first thing you want to do with the women? Like, like, what type of impact do you want to put on them? So personally, my philosophy on coaching is I'm impacting them as a person instead of just an athlete. Mm -hmm. So teaching them volleyball or whatever is the very last thing that I ever want to do. I want to make an impact on them as being strong, independent women first and foremost. And then if I'm teaching you how to get better at volleyball and teaching you the skills of volleyball at the end of the day, then I think that I've done my job. And, you know, I've been here, I think today is my 11th day. Um, and we've had a couple workouts and practices so far and we're getting better. That's my motto, get better every day, whether it's in anything, like something so small or something really big. So with like school, you did really well on a test, you got better that day. Or just something that you can say at the end of the day, like, I got better at something today. That's great to hear. And final question is, you have your fall season coming up, you got a whole summer ahead of you. So mm -hmm. what, like, what are your plans like to try to stay in contact with your players? 
So what I'm really big on is summer training. I feel like um, weightlifting and conditioning and agility really translates onto the court and your volleyball skills. So I have a binder set up for them for this summer with workouts and things to do. Um, they don't know that yet, so <laughs> <laughs> um, if they see this, they probably will. Um, but just being active over summer and really translate and in, translates into our actual fall season. Um, a lot of people don't enjoy summer workouts, but in order to succeed in the fall, it starts in the summer. Okay, and earlier you were talking about how to get better. So with this um, binder, is it, like, what are the, like, you know, the, the workouts consist of, but it's just all about, like, getting better. It's like, maybe, maybe one day I, have, I, I work on my spiking, then the next day work on your dig. So, like, like, like how does it work if you're, like, getting better? Yeah, so for volleyball, it's kind of hard to, um, you know, just play a pickup game because, obviously, you need a net and the poles and the ball. And, like, there's so much to go into it. But um, working out in the summer would just be playing at least twice a week if you can. Like hold an open gym, play beach. I know a lot of girls love playing beach in the summer, which is a different dynamic than what it is on the um, on the end court. Um, I know that a lot of girls get very, very good at defense on beach because you kind of have to. Like that's what most of beach volleyball is about. Um, but yeah, just being active and playing and whether it's playing volleyball or, you know, swimming or just something to keep you active and ready for when we report on that first day that you are making sure you're finishing the runs, making sure you can finish practice and not having to take those long breaks. So well, that's all I have for you. I just want to say thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you for coming down to the studio. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. And when we come back, I will be with Simon Graber Miller to talk about his high jump performance at Nationals. That's coming up on the Glow Sports Corner. <laughs> Goshen College students enjoy an amazing success record, and we have some impressive numbers to prove it. But stories of our graduates say even more, like developing a breakthrough antiviral drug for HIV AIDS, writing number one hits, being named one of Time Magazine's most influential people in the world for cancer research, and enjoying a broadcast career right out of college. They all started with a real-world education on a campus that makes everyone feel at home. See how the numbers add up and schedule your campus visit today at goshen.edu slash visit. Welcome back to the Glow Sports Corner. I'm joined with Simon Graber Miller, freshman high jumper for the Goshen College track and field team. Simon, thank you for coming to the studio. So let's get with the interview as you made nationals and you're a freshman, only four Maple Leafs made it. So like, so how's it feel knowing that you're going to nationals as a freshman? I mean, yeah, it was an amazing feeling. Um, I knew I could hit the height going into the season, but once I finally got it, it felt amazing. And I was also just really excited to go with the group uh, that ended up going. It was me, Deanna, Suzette, and Haley. Mm -hmm. And when you say you hit the height, what was that height that you hit? And like, can you just like, give us like a feel, like set the scene for me, like right. whatever you're going through. So to, to hit the B standard, I needed to jump six, six and a half. Um, so at the first meet, I uh, made my way up to that height, and then I finally got it. My coach was like, you can do it. Just go for it. And I went for it, and I was able to hit it on my third attempt. Yeah. Uh, and then I knew I was going to nationals from there. Oh my. It's crazy. It's really impressive. And that also set the school record, I believe so. Can you uh, talk about that? Or? That was at a later meet um, mm -hmm. where I jumped six, seven and a half, and that set the indoor school record. Okay, so very impressive. And yeah. congrats on going to nationals once again. Yeah. And next question is, so what, what's your mindset going into Nationals? Like, what are you going to do differently that you've done before? I mean, yeah, obviously there's, like, a lot of fantastic athletes at Nationals. It's the best in the country. Um, but it's also a very individual sport, so I knew I just needed to worry about uh, my own form, my own approach, and just clearing the height. Yeah. So are you just going to keep the – you're just going to keep your prep simple? Like, you got mm -hmm. the Nationals by – you're going by your original prep. Yeah. Yeah. So just staying consistent. Mm -hmm. And my coach wants me to work a lot on speed work, just getting a lot faster on the approach. Um, and then higher heights will come with that. Yeah, definitely. And final question is, you got your outdoor season coming up. So mm -hmm. how, how has that changed from indoor to outdoor when you're prepping for a high jump? Um, just finding a new spot to jump. Um, honestly, like you, you have to learn how to get a lot warmer outside because we're going to start a very cold season. Uh, staying really warmed up and just trying to clear heights. All right. Yeah. All right, well, thank you for coming to the studio. And when we come back, we'll take a look at baseball and how cold weather could affect how they play. That's up next on the Glow Sports Corner. Goshen College, 
everyone's at home here. Students from around the world and down the street find inspiration and lifelong friends in our unique supportive community, right here in Northern Indiana. Cutting edge academics, real world learning, and small personalized classes make the difference. All surrounded by world-class culture and championship sports. Most importantly, it all leads to a record of amazing outcomes in diverse fields of study. From pre-med to social work, broadcasting to accounting, schedule your campus visit today at goshen.edu slash visit. Does the colder weather affect how baseball players perform? Head baseball coach Alex Childers tells us about the effects of the cold weather on his team. March 20th, it's 1 p.m. and the first pitch is about to be thrown in Goshen, Indiana. It's 32 degrees and snowing and you can't grip the ball. The baseball players of Goshen College face struggles that not every student athlete has to deal with, the cold. It is a huge hurdle that the baseball team has to jump over every year. The main reason being that it forces them to practice inside. Jeremiah Shero is on the scene with Coach Childers, head coach for the Maple Leafs baseball program. Coach Childers, uh, what are some of the disadvantages of playing inside as opposed to outside? I think the biggest difference is probably the fact that the game's played in space. Like it's played outside in space, and, and the cold weather kind of forces us to be in more confined spaces. So you got to do a little bit more simulating. you got to play things out a little bit differently than you would if you were in a warm weather area or able to get on the field all the time. But that's the biggest difference, but fundamentally the game's the same. you got to throw it, you got to catch it, you got to hit it. What are some of the challenges that come with playing outside in the cold? Uh, when the weather kind of changes and you're playing baseball outside in the cold, I don't believe that the game changes too much. Some of the things you might see is ability to spin the breaking ball and things like that. But if you look at the highest level, like postseason baseball at the major league level is played in the colder months of the year. And it's still the same game. Um, and I think, too, is like cold weather gear. And it's more about the ability to stay engaged, you know, when the elements aren't great. But I don't think it changes it that much. What's the coldest temperature you guys would go outside in before you call it, say, hey, it's too cold to go outside? Well, just this year, the conference actually put in a rule where conference games, the real feel has to be above 32 or 32 or above. So they actually implemented something this year. But I can think back to some, some games that we've played where it's well below freezing. Um, and it's just kind of what it is. You, you deal with it. You handle it. Um, but we've played in temps where the field's been around that 20 degree mark. That's a little bit cold, but uh, for the most part, we're just kind of dealing with the late winter sport is what it is. And uh, I, I think if you ask any of the guys on the team, they would rather play games than practice. So if it's cold, it's what it is, and you kind of deal with it. 25% of Goshen College's roster comes from a place that isn't typically cold in March and April. However, even at the top levels, players sometimes have to deal with these conditions. Even through these challenges, the team still performs to their best ability. I'm Gabe Kermode, reporting for Globe Sports. That wraps up this episode of the Sports Corner. Tune in next week for more interviews, stories, and everything about your Goshen College Maple Leafs. We'll see you next time on the Globe Sports Corner.